All right. Uh, the scripture passage this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 6, and I'll be reading verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I, might, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Morning, Waterdam. It's good to be with all of you today. Um, I want to just uh, make sure I don't forget this. Um, this is on behalf of the Cario family. Um, the viewing is today in Cannonsburg at Solon Funeral Home, August 27th, which is today, 2 to 4, 6 to 8. And then tomorrow will be the funeral at the same funeral home at 11 o'clock. Then the family will gather back here for a, for a dinner to be together and to have fellowship. Um, we're thankful for the fact that we can offer that as a church family, and uh, it's a blessing to have to be able to come back and be cared for and nurtured by some of our people. And so just pray for them. If you're not able to c come to the viewing today or um, t tomorrow's funeral, we, uh, we want to make sure that we pray for them. We also want to say to you that uh, we appreciate all your prayers and the fact that your um, name is in the directory. For those of you that don't have your names in the directory, I hope that you'll get them in there soon. Because what I do is I take the directory, I, I brought it today, I was going to hold it up, but I don't need to hold it up for you to, to know, that I prayed, and I prayed today for a few things. One is that, I'll take it back here, but notice it says, be strong in the Lord. So I, I prayed that you would be strong in the Lord, and, and basically that you would trust in His strength and not your own. And the second thing is that you would put on the whole armor of God, not just some of it. A lot of people want to piecemeal it and take what they like and leave pack. The, the parts that are hard. And uh, that's not what God uh, wants us to do. We have to, we have to basically put on the full armor of God. We have to have salvation. We have to have righteousness. We have to have our feet shod with the gospel. Um, those things can't be left out. You need the shield of faith. All of those things, you can't, can't take one without the other. So you need the whole armor of God and that you need to take your stand against the devil's schemes and that we have an enemy. And a lot of people diminish that or they minimize it to the point where they don't even pay attention to the devil. And then others overemphasize it. And, and that's all they ever blame everything on. And, and uh, sometimes the devil did make you do it, okay? The devil may have tempted you to do it. Let's put it that way, as Flip Wilson said uh, so long ago. But uh, you can't blame the devil all the time. Some of it's our own sin. And so we have to be careful with that. As if we have the strength, we need God's strength to be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for our day. We just pray for your help in understanding these truths. Whether you're a new believer or you're not a believer, I pray that God would open your eyes today so that you might see the blessings of his word as we consider what he has to say to us about standing against uh, somebody that he called the father of lies someone who came to steal, kill, and destroy. And so as we think about that aspect of it, that he causes doubt, division, and desperation in people, we ask, Lord, now that you would give us hope and that where death has reigned, that you have overcome death and darkness, that you live so that we might live. And so, Lord, we just pray for your help for the soul that's out there that's 
having trouble standing right now and struggling to stand. We ask for your help for them. We pray for those who are standing but um, need to be encouraged to keep standing. And Lord, we just pray for those that don't know you yet, that they would come and consider you as their Lord and Savior, that they need to know that they need you to be able to stand before you, that it is only through knowing you that we can have salvation and peace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know how many of you grew up during the uh, era that I grew up. I grew up, I was born in 64, so as I came up, the Vietnam War was part of my childhood. Um, I, I grew up with the pictures being on the news at night as I was growing up, and then uh, when I finally graduated, uh, one of the things that they required you to do in 1983 was that you had to go register for the draft in case they did draft. They did, the draft was not in place at that time, but you had to register. And that was a strange feeling to go there, put my name online, and know that the government could summon me at any time to, to become part of the military uh, uh, of the United States. Now, my dad, he was, he was in the Korean War. He was drafted. Uh, he wasn't actually drafted, but before they drafted him, he actually signed up for the Navy. So he was in the Navy for four years. But I just want to point something out to you. Dr. Bob Deffenball writes that Paul's instructions to put on the full armor of God is a command. During the Second World War, he says, my father and many other men received a letter in the mail that began something like this. Greetings from the President of the United States. That letter, as you may know, was notification of having been drafted into the military. The president's greeting was not an invitation. It was a summons. It was a summons. One did not dare to ignore this letter without expecting serious consequences. Paul's instructions concerning the spiritual war are similar in that Paul is informing every Christian that they have been drafted. that they have been drafted, not to fight in a physical war, but a spiritual war. We are not encouraged to take up the full armor of God. We are commanded to do so. And these verses are our marching orders, and we dare not ignore them or fail to carry them out to the letter. So Paul's final instructions here to the Ephesus church is for God's people to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And Paul says, finally, he says, finally, after all the things that he's been saying in this letter, it's six chapters, you could go home and read it this afternoon for your benefit, that Paul was talking to a pagan city, Ephesus. The city of Ephesus was enchanted by lies, false gods, false comforts, false securities, and the false promises of happiness that will not deliver in the end. So here at the end of this epistle, the letter, which he has said so much, the end of the matter is this. Stand, he's saying. Resist the lies of the age and, the tr and hold on to the truth of God. So I've seen a lot of you lately on Facebook. I don't know how many of you have seen this, but how many of you have seen the posting of the scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 4? Let me read it to you. It says, now the Spirit expressly says, the capital S, the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit expressly says, that in the later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Have you seen that on your Facebook feed? I've seen that. A lot of you are posting that. And there's a sense, you can tell, there's a sense in, in people, in God's people and in people out there, that, that it's, the, the world is not what it used to be. Um, and, and that there's a sense that there is a darkness about it. And there's a, a, a sense that, notice it says that people are devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. In other words, lies and demonic teaching. And people are looking for happiness. I, I spoke to someone this week. I couldn't believe it. I, I was talking to them. They, they consulted me for help, but they told me that they believed in Odin and Thor and, and things like this. And that's Marvel, man. That's a comic book. And I believe, but, but it's, it's steeped in Greek mysticism and, and uh, talking about the, uh, you know, I can't even think about what it, where Thor thought he was going to go. I can't even remember. But 
but if that's where your faith is, man, I'm telling you, you need to go to Jesus. And today is your calling. Because you need the strength of God. You need the salvation of God. And it's based on truth, not a lie. Not on mysticism or, or Greek mythology. Um, when, when, when we need to have a sense of, of God's strength is, I'll tell you, it doesn't happen when everything's good. It happens when you're, when you're getting hit. And, and, and Spurgeon used to say this, God is too good to be unkind. He is too wise to make a mistake. So when we cannot trace his hand, we must trust his heart. And that's the thing about standing on the promises of God. The strength we need is found in the strength of God. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Not your own strength, but in God's strength. And so he says something very interesting. Right after this verse, he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And, and you know, like, I, I, like to think of, I like to think of Christianity as, as a, just a, a, a loving place and a, and a place where God's people care about you and that you can learn about Jesus and have salvation and that life is, is good, that life is grand, but it's, it's, it's not just a cruise ship that we're on. We're on a battleship. And, and you've got to understand that you're, you're into the fight. Uh, you're, you're not able to... I was thinking about if they stuck me in one of those MMA cages... With, uh, I can't remember that guy that's like nuts. I mean, he jumps around and, and stuff. But I would be running from that guy all the time. But eventually, I'd run out of space in that MMA cage. Because he would finally, I would have to fight eventually. And, and that's the way I think a lot of, some people, as Christians, we think, oh, if I could just avoid it, I'll just get along and go along. I won't say too much here. And, and I, I don't want to make waves, uh, you know. But, but what God is telling us is that sooner or later, every believer, this is Warren Wiersbe, discovers that the Christian life is a battleground, not a playground. And that he faces an enemy who is much stronger than he is, apart from the Lord. In uh, Steve White's, Dr. Steve White's book, uh, and, and Pastor Peter Mercury, uh, Mercury, Mercury, I think is his name. And, and he works with 21C International Ministries where they train up Christian pastors and leaders. And Steve, Dr. Steve came to talk to us here. He, he kind of introduced us, introduced us to the ministry. And, and I, I am excited to hear about it. I'm actually excited about what they do. But Steve just recorded a bunch of uh, videos about the book of Ephesians. And the people, he had 4,000 people want to follow, begin following him. And, and that was an amazing thing that happened to him. But in his book, they write, we are called to be strong in the power of the resurrected Christ has given us, for instance, making us redeemed and adopted children of God. God's adopted us. If we've come to know him as our Lord and Savior, God's adopted us. That means we're a kid of the kingdom. We're God's kid. And I don't know about you, but if you mess with my kids, you're messing with me, right? Right? So they're not just coming with themselves. They're coming with me behind them. I'm going to be with them. And God's going to be with his children. And we have to remember that. He is, we have to be strong in the Lord. We are called into the Lord's united body that he brings and he unites us together by his Holy Spirit, by his son's blood. We have been purchased. We've been called out of the world into the body of Christ, into the body of the church, enabling us to preach and teach God's plan. Ephesians 3.10 says that we are to preach the manifold wisdom, that God manifests his wisdom through the church. And so, and as we think about that, God has enabled us to take on untruth, the lies of the world, enabling God's children to love, to live his light, and to spread his wisdom. It enables us to honor Christ in our marriage and family and work life. All those things that we've been talking about is that we are a witness to the world when we just live out the Christian faith. It's not that you have to know everything. It's that you have to be who you are and whose you are. And so listen to Ephesians chapter 1, verse, starting at verse 7. If you want to turn back there, you're in the book, so you should be able to find it pretty easily. It says, in him we have redemption through, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. In him, verse 11, 
In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who are the first to hope in Christ might be the praise of his glory. Verse 13, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the good news of your salvation, in other words, and believed in him were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. So God says, I'll seal you uh, with the promise of the Holy Spirit. And then he says in 14, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Now, when my mom died, I got to tell you, I got rocked back on my feet. And most of us experienced that. The, the, to lose a parent, to, to lose my last parent, uh, 11 months after my dad died, I wasn't ready for that, right? You don't stand up one day and say, I'm, I'm good. I believe in Jesus. Everything will be fine. No big deal. No, it's not like that. I have to trust that I am sealed for the day of redemption. I have to trust that my mom is sealed for the day of redemption, that I'll be reunited and re, re, uh, uh, stored, and that her body who was failing will be restored, that she'll have a resurrection body. I prayed with my mom about Jesus coming and talking about it, and she said, hurry, Jesus, hurry, Jesus. And I don't know what she meant either to come and relieve her of the pain, but I know she was praying with me, and Melissa was sitting there with me, and, and it, it, what I'm telling you is that you don't plan for that day. You don't get up. That's not a normal day. That's not a nine-to-five day. You don't get up for that. You're faced with that all of a sudden. You, you, okay, now, now read the words. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. And then it says put on the full armor of God so that you'll stand up against the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the devil. You don't just lock that into your head and do it in, out, of, out of what you know. It comes with the faith. And, and, and every once in a while you get knocked down. Life runs into you. And so as we look at this, and that in him, see that Satan, what's Satan tempts us to do, to do? He tempts us to despair. He tempts us to doubt. He tempts us to say, is that, you know, are you sure about all this stuff? Did God really say, is there really a heaven I mean, all of that comes at you when you're in the middle of that. And what I'm telling you is that we need to be strong in the Lord. We need to hear the command or the call of God, the warning here of God. Finally, he says, be strong in the Lord. Not in yourself, because you're not capable of dealing with it in yourself, but in the strength of his might. Philippians 4.13 is a great verse we quoted often. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So the principle here, stand in God's strength, not yours, not your own. He has all the strength we need. And then there's the armor that we must put on. The armor that we must put on. That, that armor is there for you. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Paul said the same thing in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So we're to be sober and we're to suit up. Sober meaning not just free of alcohol and numb, but sober meaning alert and ready and awake. Right? Right? So sober up, take it seriously, suit up, put on the whole armor of God. Now, notice God provides the armor. It's something that we are told to put on. And you think about it, if you've ever played hockey, you got to put on a lot of stuff before you go play hockey. If you've ever played football, you got to put on a lot of stuff. And, and you don't just leave something behind, right? You're to put the whole thing on. And a lot of people try to come to Christianity and say, well, I like that salvation stuff and that stuff about eternity, but do I really need the shield of faith? Do I need to worry about all this other stuff? You know, no, yeah, you do. Yeah. You can't take one without the other. And so you have to put it on. 
Christians who are looking for Christ to come will stay awake and be alert. They will not become drunken like the people of the world. Wake and sleep here do not mean alive and, and dead, as in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. They mean respectively being alert. Christians should be living clean, dedicated lives when Jesus comes. Our enemy is not of this world, so our warfare cannot be of this world. It is not of the flesh, so neither is our weapons. So what kind of weapons do we need? Well, Romans 13, 12 is a very great, I love this passage because I love the idea of being told to put on the armor of light. Look what he says there. The night is far gone, the day is at hand, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Paul uses all these pictures for us to catch what he's talking about. The armor of light, the armor of truth. Light shows up big time in darkness and in dark times. We have to put it on. Romans chapter 13, verse 12. And so when we look at that passage, um, it's important for us to understand that we're in a battle here, but the weapons of our warfare are not of this world. Notice what he says there. The weapons that we fight with are not weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient. Now, it's an interesting thing because what, what it's saying there is that the truth of God is what's coming against these arguments that people are making. Have you ever noticed that there's no truth anymore? These people say, well, that's your truth. That's not my truth. And, and, or, or you'll say, there's no, there's, there's no there there. And they use all kinds of fancy language. I mean, just think about the used car that it used to be used cars. You don't get a used car. You get a pre-owned car now. We're very good with our, our, uh, our language. We're careful in the way that we phrase things. But a pre-owned car is still a used car. It, it was in my day, and it's still that way. Oh, it's pre-owned. And then they got another little tag on it, certified pre-owned. And then they say, well, you need the uh, warranty because all this stuff could break and fall apart in a few months. And I, I asked the guy one time, Hannah was buying a car. I said, what is it? You're telling me this car is just going to fall apart? He goes, no, I'm not telling you. I said, you sound like you're saying to me that this car is going to fall apart. I said, that's what you said. You said I needed this warranty because all the things, if the thing's going to fall apart. And he goes, no, no, no. I'm not telling you the car is going to fall apart. It's a good car. It's pre-owned. It's certified. I said, oh, I thought that's what you said earlier, but now you're trying to sell me a warranty telling me it's going to fall apart. I was getting mad at that guy. I was ready to get up and kill the sale. And Hannah's sitting there like she didn't know what to do. And her dad, I'm starting to get mad. I'm like, I should have just said, I'm out of here. I'm going to tell your, tell your boss that you just killed the sale. But we have to take captive every thought that makes it obedient to Christ because what does Satan do? He's, he's kind of trying to sell it, right? He's trying to manipulate you. So we have to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So we don't fight with the weapons of this world. Because why? Why? Because the enemy we face is called the devil. And so Paul warns us, the Christian soldier, that we have an enemy to overcome. We dare not face off with him without God or without a body of believers. In other words, so you, don't, you need to have a company of people with you so you don't get picked off. And uh, one of the things that they tell you is don't go too far out in front. They'll mistake you for the enemy. And that's the way it is for the vision. I mean, you're casting vision in your company. Don't go too far out in front of people because if they don't know who you are and know what you are what you're about, they'll mistake you for the enemy. That's what this one guy told me, his pastor. He's, he smiled when he said, he says, they'll shoot you. So when we think about it, we need a company of people to help us to walk the walk to talk the talk, right? We need to, if we're going to be strong in the Lord, we've got to be with God's people to encourage us when we're not always strong. And we need God's help because we have an enemy and he's called the devil. It says that he puts these schemes together. The word is methods or his methodology. So beginning in verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we, look at verse 12, 
for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not human. Our battle is not against people. It's, about a, it's in a spiritual realm. Yes, we have differences with people sometimes, but it's, he's saying that the spiritual battle goes on and it's not against flesh and blood. It's not human. But it's against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers and spiritual forces. I heard a guy talking about it. There's all kinds of meta narratives. If you want to see what this looks like, just watch Lord of the Rings. That's a meta narrative of, of kind of depicting of what that battle would look like. Some of you like the Lord of the Rings, but it's not the Bible, right? It's not the Bible. But it's somebody's meta narrative that represents the Bible of all these forces coming against. We notice that our enemy is made up of darkness and demonic forces, rulers and authorities. Now, most of us have walked out the door this morning and we didn't think about this, right? We didn't think about this. We don't think about this stuff. Until it hits you in the face. Or until you see stuff on the news. I mean, it's crazy. Are police officers facing the stuff that they face? There was a shooting going on in, was it Garfield Heights or whatever? That stuff goes on all the time. And I, I moved here from a town of 7,000 people, Belpre, Ohio. I mean, <laughs> when I first came here, all I saw was shootings and knifings and, and fires. And people said, well, that's not... I wrote to the, to the, to the television company, and I, and I said, do you guys have any good news? Because you remember Fred Hansberger? He talked about how Pittsburgh has nothing good on the news. And I said, I agree with you, Fred. So I, I, call, I wrote to WTAP, or w, not w, TAP is in West Virginia, Parkersburg, West Virginia. What is the name? WTAP? <laughs> WTAE, right? Okay, thank you. But I wrote to him. I said, hey, I said, you got anything other than knifings and stabbings and shootings and fires? I mean, everybody's burning everything down <laughs> or something's going on. And I'm like, what in the world? And, and so when I first came here, I noticed it. But people in Pittsburgh, you get used to it. It just blends into the news after a while. And so it's just like, you know, it's like, okay, it's just another day in the, in the hood. And, and so... We, we have to understand that there is a dark force, but it's not human. It's spiritual. It's a darkness. There's a spiritual darkness out there. When I say of the devil, what comes to mind? He's not a little red guy on a, with a pitchfork. His name means accuser because he's, he accuses God's people day and night before the throne of God. That's in Revelation 12, 7 through 11. His name means adversary because the enemy of God, he is also called the tempter. And he's also called the murderer and a liar by Jesus in John chapter 8, verse 44. Jesus said he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life abundantly, but the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy you. That's Jesus. And so we have to understand that this, he ain't no joke. David Jeremiah says, did you know that Satan's purpose is to divide and conquer? Satan always has been a divider. When he was cast out of heaven, he divided the angels. He took a third of them with him. He instigated division in the first family, pitting Cain against evil, Abel. And in the early church, he entered into the heart of Ananias and motivated him to divide his loyalty between God and money. Wherever you see Satan at work, there is always division. That's true. He is also called a lion in the scriptures, waiting outside your door to devour you. Right? 1 Peter 5, 8. A serpent who deceives back in the garden. Why did he deceive? Because he wanted to destroy what God had, the crown of his creation. He wanted to destroy Adam and Eve. He wanted to divide them. He masks arrayed as an angel of light. In the Bible, he's called the God of this age in 2 Corinthians 4 that he came to darken the mind of people. He seeks to blind the truth, men of the truth, men and women. Now, I don't know whether you're in darkness or not. I don't know whether you believe in Jesus or not. But according to the Bible, the Bible says that God can overcome that darkness. And that if you're here, that Jesus Christ came 
to conquer Satan, sin, and death. It's, he is able to overcome it. 1 John 3, 8 says the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So our struggle, our struggle, your struggle, my struggle, is standing in the strength of the Lord and not in my own strength. That there is an armor to put on all of it, not some of it, and that there's an enemy that we face. And, and we think about this. Look at the warning from Paul to the Corinthians. He said, S -s -s be careful where you stand, lest you fall. I'm going to do something. I'm going to stop here because I'm going to just continue it so you don't have to try to absorb all of this. We're going to, try to, we're going to come back to this in two weeks. I won't be here next week. But what I want you to see is how important it is to know that you've been summoned by God. If you're here, God's talking to you, and he's knocking on your door. And now when things happen, like happened to me or something else, there is a struggle to even stand up, to stand firm. It's, it's a struggle. Lauren Daigle's song, Oh Lord, Our Lord, is, is a great song. And it, it, she says something um, interesting in, in my opinion. She says, through times it seems like I'm coming undone. This walk can often feel lonely. No matter what, until this race is won, I will stand my ground where hope can be found. I will stand my ground where, I can't sing it, where hope can be found. I will stand my ground where hope can be found. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I know you hear my cry. Your love is lifting me above all the lies. No matter what I face, this I know in time, you'll take all that is wrong and make it right. You'll take all that is wrong and make it right. Your strength is found at the end of my road. So in other words, not in yourself, at the end of yourself, when you come to the end of yourself. That's what suffering does to us. So when we have suffering and, and we get knocked back on our feet, the thing is, is that suffering makes us release our own ability to fix things. You see, because I had to come to the end of myself with my mom. There's nothing more I could do. And I had to, now I'm going to have to trust God for what is unseen, not as seen, see, and so I had to come to the end of myself. And not to say that I didn't try to fix it, because there's several of you that I called and talked to that I was trying to fix it. And, and it's just, it was very moving to hear this. Um, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I know that you hear my cry. Your love is lifting me above the lies. No matter what I face, this is, I know in time, you'll take that is wrong and make it right. You'll take what is wrong and make it right. I will stand my ground. I will stand my ground. I will stand my ground where hope can be found. I will stand my ground where hope can be found. Friend, hope is found in Jesus. Sober up, stand up, and then get suited up. And that's what we're going to talk about next week, or not two weeks, suited up, okay? So I hope you'll come back, and uh, I'll pray for you guys, and then we'll close in our last song. Father God, we thank you for all that you can do for us. We ask for your help as that we know that we have an enemy to face and that there is an armor that we must put on, an armor of light, an armor that you have provided to stand against the schemes of the devil and that we are called to be strong in you in the strength of your might and not our own strength. So, Lord, help us to do all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I, uh, I hope that you... We're encouraged today to come to Christ and that uh, you would trust in him and in him alone for your salvation so that if you ever find yourself on the, the edge of eternity, that you know that God is there and that his hand will reach out to save you. He already has reached out his hand, friend, in Jesus Christ, that he wants you to come and, and believe in Jesus, ask him for the forgiveness of your sins. And he said he is faithful to forgive you of all sins. 
Hear the words of the benediction. May the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.